I grew up near Disneyland in Anaheim, California. We used to go all the time and still go every time I visit my family. On my last two visits, my sister and I went on a scavenger hunt to find hidden features all over the happiest place on earth. So come with us as we go on an adventure through Disneyland. Since we were little girls, we have to always stop at the old phones on Main Street to listen to the Party Line Conversation. Go oh, inside the market house where you can get coffee and right when you walk in, you're going to see one over here and a couple more over here. And again, they've been here forever. So there's another phone inside the magic shop on Main Street. And when you lift it up, you can listen to the recording of Thomas Edison. When you pick it up, it sounds like an old recording, but it's actually David Copperfield. So Mr. Lincoln has been here forever. That's also from the World's Fair of 1964. I remember my parents would take us in there and I was bored stiff. But it's pretty cool if you've never been in there. But as a kid, the kids might not like it as much as you do. So this right here was a lamp post that was found on Wilshire Boulevard in downtown Los Angeles. If you didn't know this, you can go inside here and actually see the original Steamboat Willie that started it all. There are little popcorn turners all over the park. They are called Roasty Toasties. The characters are themed to the area that you are in. Sometimes the characters are different depending on the season. They were originally all clowns and they date back to the opening of Disneyland in 1955. Harper Goff, who created Disneyland's Main Street USA with Walt Disney, grew up in Fort Collins, Colorado. Harper came back to Fort Collins in the 1950s to photograph the buildings of his youth to use as the model for the buildings along Main Street USA. Main Street's props and fixtures were designed by Emile Curie. You can find his name above the Marketplace building, ironically, as the interior designer. I heard something long you know, when I was a kid or teenager, they used to be mountain, a mountain climber that would climb the, ma uh, the Matterhorn. I don't know if they still do that or not anymore. If they do? Comment down below. Do you know who these youngsters are? If you think you know the answer, put it down in the comments. The answer will be at the end of this video. Main Street USA is a bustle with trolleys, buses, and the like. The vehicles include a fire engine, horse-drawn street cars, horseless carriage, and a double-deckered bus called an omnibus. The fire wagon inside the Main Street Fire Station was once an operating vehicle. On Disneyland's opening day, it was one of three options that you could choose from if you wanted to take a slow horse-driven trip from the beginning of Main Street to the castle. The fire wagon carried its last guest in 1960. In 1956, a few motorized vehicles made their way onto Main Street USA and are still in operation today. The last addition to the Main Street fleet was a vintage fire truck. The fire truck is a replica of the very first fire trucks that existed. 
the omnibuses were patterned after French and English buses of 1908. All were built at Walt Disney Studios. Right here. There's your little man's house. Right there, you see it? There it is, it's right there. Little man's house. It's right under the Indiana Jones sign. In Adventureland, you can find the hidden leprechaun house. The leprechaun is referred to as the little man in the tree. He is the character Patrick Borgonia from the book Little Man from Disneyland that was put out by Disney in 1955 to promote Disneyland. The story goes that Patrick lived in the orange grove that once were on the land where Disneyland sits now when Mickey, Donald, and Pluto showed up to build Disneyland, they met Patrick. At the end, he allowed them to build Disneyland for an exchange of a new home in the park. But in reality, the house did not appear until 2015 because people that knew about the book were always looking for the house. The link to buy the book is in the description of this video. Bizarrely, I could not find the book anywhere in Disneyland. Walt created the Jungle Cruise ride because he wanted to create an experience and bring other parts of the world to people because international travel to exotic destinations wasn't easy back in the 50s. Walt set out creating a jungle paradise that included exotic animals in the middle of the semi-arid desert of Southern California. His Imagineers got to work. The initial design was modeled after the movie African Queen with its characteristic boat. The final design ended up representing jungles from all over the world. So in the orange groves of Southern California, a jungle started emerging. But where did they get all those plants? The landscape architect went all over the different neighborhoods of Anaheim, buying people's trees and plants. During this time, the five freeway and many other freeways were being built throughout the area. So trees were recovered from the construction sites of the freeways, then replanted around the Jungle Cruise ride. They even traveled the world to collect seeds and trees. Some of the orange trees from the original orange groves were even saved, but not in the way that you think. They were literally planted upside down because an orange tree has a very interesting root system, making them look like they belong to an exotic jungle. One of the trees is known as the Dominguez palm. This palm tree has sentimental value to Ron Dominguez, who was a former Disney executive and legend at the park. His family once owned some of the surrounding property the palm tree was given to his grandparents as a wedding gift around the turn of the 20th century. Walt had the tree moved to its present location right next to the entrance of the Jungle Cruise ride, where you can still see it today. So it's this tree right here. Realizing that they could not use real animals in the Jungle Cruise, because they just won't be as exciting due to sleeping all day long. They turned to revolutionary animatronics, but many of the gears and hydraulics could be seen through the water, such as for the hippos. So they dye the water a murky green so you can't see the mechanics of the animals 
and the tracks of the boats. Fun fact, Walt Disney used to sleep at the park quite a bit when they were building Disneyland. He always slept in his apartment on top of the fire station, but the Jungle Cruise ride would keep him up all night long with the animal noises because nobody knew how to turn them off. If you go to the fire station, you'll notice that the Jungle Cruise is just on the other side of the wall from the station. So that used to be up there, it used to be the people mover. And these used to be the rockets. And then after the Atlantis movie, it became this Heather ride where they had these like Atlantis kind of cars. And now it is nothing. And Tomorrowland's gotten really empty on rides. This is an open space mountain. That used to be, when I was a kid, Mission to the Moon, and then it was Mission to Mars. It's just a little store now. It's just they really need to do something with all these defunct rides. I'm mistaken, that thing going around, that's the rockets now. Um, and it kind of, the theme is like from the movie Atlantis from years ago. Um, so the other thing I pointed out was not the old rockets, this, that was. So yeah, this used to, they made this into a rack. Um, this used to be part of the rocket ships at one time. See how it still has the handle in it? Did you know the Dorito chip was born in Disneyland? When we were kids, the Mexican restaurant in Frontierland was Casa de Fritos. I remember you would get a bag of Fritos with every meal. The Fritos Company restaurant didn't make the tortillas or taco shells. Those were purchased from a local company. One day in the early 1960s, one of the Fritos Company employees saw stale tortillas being discarded. He told the cook to make them in into tortilla chips instead of just tossing them into the trash. The throwaway snack was a hit. Casa de Fritos started putting them on the menu and called them Doritos, which means little golden things. Shortly after that, the snack made its marketing debut in 1966. Looking for a place with short lines and a place to cool off? Try going on Sailing Ship Columbia. Below deck is a great hidden museum and great view that a lot of people don't even know exists. There's also a hidden ship above the French market in New Orleans squares. At least the mass of a pirate ship. To see the ship off in the distance, stand at the French market and look up above the buildings of the Pirates of the Caribbean and you'll see the mass. The hearse outside the Haunted Mansion has an urban legend attached to it. It is alleged that it was Mormon pioneer leader Brigham Young's hearse. The myth is not true according to the Mormon church. The story started when the previous owner was told that Young's family claimed it was used at his funeral. But the church says there was not a hearse at Brigham's services. I have been told that it is common for Mormon hearse to be white. It is also alleged that you can see bodily fluids from when it was really used. I did see something with my telephoto lens. Do you think this is real fluid or just damage? Tell us what you think in the comments. Make sure you are on the right hand lane so you can see the hearse up close. If you are lucky, you will hear the phantom horse that is harnessed to the vehicle. There is also a hearse at the Walt Disney World version of the Haunted Mansion. The hearse was previously a movie prop 
used in the 1965 Western film, The Sons of Katie Elder. We could spend all day showing you the hidden stories inside the Haunted Mansion, enough to warrant another video. But I will tell you one of my favorites, and that's the bullet hole. The story goes, in the grand ballroom scene, you can find a bullet hole in the glass. Someone in the 70s shot the glass where the dueling portraits are. But the glass is too difficult to fix, so they put a spider over the hole to cover it up. Side note, the organ in the ballroom is the same organ in the movie. 20 leagues under the sea. Right here, it's like behind this trash can. <laughs> wow. So this was going to be part of the John Lafitte ride that was going to be on Tom Sawyer's Island, which is what now? It's the Pirates, Pirates the Pair and something. And so they were going to do John Lafitte's, uh, they were going to do a big tomb right there of John Lafitte. And for some reason they decided to go the pirate route. Well, John pirate. Lafitte is a pirate. Well, there you go. There you go. <laughs> has it that they have a problem with people spreading their ashes in the Pirates of the Caribbean all the time? In fact, their loved ones' ashes. Why? Because that's, I don't know, they asked to be, to have their ashes spread in the Pirates of the that's Caribbean. <laughs> Did you know there are feral cats all over Disneyland? The rumor is they first lived inside Sleeping Beauty's castle. Walt allowed the felines to stay within the park to help with any rodent problems. It is thought that the colony ranges about 200 cats today. If you are lucky enough to see the cats, you can tell they are well taken care of by the park. Make sure to check out their unofficial website and Instagram account so you can learn their names. As mentioned before, it is rumored the park has issues with people dumping loved ones' ashes in the Pirates of the Caribbean. But this isn't the first body remains in the ride. Real human bones were originally used the real human skeletons and bones were sourced from the University of California, Los Angeles, better known as UCLA. But since then, they have been replaced by convincing skeletal models. The originals were returned to their countries of origin and given proper burials. It is said that the skull above the pirate's bed is the only remaining real one left. So the telegraph station that's there at the um, New Orleans Square train station has a message from Walt Disney. Juliet, there's a horse on here named Jingles, right there. Okay. <laughs> and he was um, dedicated to Julie Andrews, has her initials on it, and it has symbols of Mary Poppins on it. So for their, what, 50th anniversary? They dedicated jingles to him, and it was Mrs. Disney's uh, favorite horse. <laughs> oh, now you're on board with my little nuggets. <laughs> See how, so she's the same size as all they are. She looks bigger to me. And so, they put her up high and kind of back a little bit so she looks like she's further away. Well, she is further away. <laughs> <laughs> Will you just go with it? Going. Yeah, they start going. But have you ever noticed the jewels behind him? The what, the mine? Yeah, I see the mine oh, with yeah. the jewels yeah. sparkling. Be very patient and wait for this to happen. And music will start playing. 
And then you'll start hearing her echo in the wishing well. So you have to wait until the water up that comes out the sides here, my weirdo sister. <laughs> I'm so putting you on YouTube. I am. I put you on YouTube. <laughs> I'm going to put a big smiley face on you so nobody can see your face. Okay, so we're going into Sleeping Beauty's castle. It's right underneath the castle. It's a little secret entrance where you can be told the story of Sleeping Beauty. Let's go! <laughs> Stairs. Oh no! What are they going to do? <laughs> so this is what? Like a dungeon door? Wait, it's not working. <laughs> it's, what did you it's supposed to like make a sound. <laughs> you were expecting. I, I totally didn't get that. <laughs> okay, wait. It's not doing it anymore. <laughs> What's happening? Watch her horn. She comes around the corner. Wait. Uh, 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 uh. <gasps> <laughs> there are many more hidden features and stories to tell you about Disneyland, but this is one of many videos we have to offer on the Magic Kingdom. So make sure to be on the lookout for those videos. And thank you so much for watching, and we will see you soon on Colorado Martini.